panic on the U.S. social media streets as the recent BRICS summit has some of them in a tailspin and a tiz. But here's the thing. America, y'all need to calm down. <laughs> this BRICS summit is not going to challenge the uh, dominance of the U.S. and the European market, at least not now or even in the near future. Molo Sanbonani, hello, how's it? Welcome to it. This is another episode of the Buka Nazo Show. My name is Sihle Ngobese. Guys, I'm going to jump straight into it because it was the panic uh, and the tiz and tailspin that I saw on social media, mostly accounts out of the United States and, of course, their mainstream media regarding, of course, the BRIC summit that was held here in Santon, South Africa, last week. Again, a massive panic. Oh, the BRICS currency is going to destroy America. These developing countries, yada, yada, yada. Guys, stop it. Stop. I mean, don't take it from me. This is what we're basically seeing on our social media streets. Peter, how about it? Um, I don't see anything good of the BRICS nations coming together and strategizing, as they say, to pretty much take over the world and screw over the West. I don't know who needs to hear this. Wake up. Wake up. What, what is going on? I'm not understanding how we could be going through, potentially, a crisis. Like a serious crisis where the BRICS nation is combining their money together to devalue the American dollar. BRICS. Brazil BRICS. Russian BRICS. The Indian BRICS. Chinese BRICS. South Africa BRICS. They ain't talking Gucci man, but they've been talking BRICS. So these five countries came together with the intent to make America's dollar equivalent to zero cent. If Breaking news. You've been given the date the US dollar is going to collapse on the 1st of January 2024. So this is breaking news and you uh, have just been given the date or they have just given you the date and you can find videos of them announcing this. So this was uh, an announcement, an official announcement from the BRICS summit from 2023 conference where they were talking about expansion and they have announced that there are uh, going to be from the 1st of January 2024, there's going to be new members that are joining. Here's the problem with the absolute panic that we're seeing from Americans. Effectively, they're panicking over an institution that is BRICS. That is, what is it, really? Is it a, a block? Is it a mere cooperation of countries? It is, a, is it an alliance? Like, there's no real tangibles on the institution of BRICS itself. And secondly, there aren't any actual tangibles, at least none that I'm aware of, in real terms, of actual strong developed institutions of BRICS which would challenge what effectively broadly is called the West, that's US and the Euro market, um, provide in their foreign diplomacy. So why the panic? I mean, if anything, this BRICS summit showed you just the lack of tangibles involved in all of this. Again, what do I mean by this? Let's look at some of the outcomes of this BRICS summit, including its mere declaration of what they're looking to do. And ask the question from there, why would you panic over this? Now, I'm going to read from EWN, which basically shared what this declaration had said as following. Now, after extensive deliberations among emerging market economies, President Cyril Ramaphosa said all five BRICS leaders have agreed on plans to accelerate growth and sustainable development for ma member uh, states. The BRICS leaders believe the latest resolutions will be underpinned by greater representation of developing countries and inclusive multilateralism. The 26-page declaration includes calls for a peaceful resolution to global conflicts. Now, let me take a moment here. Calls, that's it? That's all it's going to do? It's not going to set up its own BRICS institutions and bring in armies from the various countries in order to deal with some of these conflicts that it mentions? Merely calls for the stuff? Again, there is a lack of tangibles here, a lack of institutions, which I really don't think should see the West even panic over this. But it gets even better. If that's how they address security issues as BRICS, what will it look like then on the economic front? Is there maybe meat and potatoes there? Well, the piece goes on to say, BRICS leaders have also agreed to agitate for the reform of economic policies and to manage the implications of the rising geopolitical tensions on global financial stability. End of quote. 
<laughs> they're going to agitate for economic policies. Guys, this is what I mean, and really is testament to why I'm saying the U.S. have nothing to worry about here. If anything, the only thing that is, let's call it tangible or a development that came out of this BRICS summit, the 15th BRICS summit in Sancton, was effectively the announcement of new members, uh, six new countries uh, who will be part of this BRICS. What is it, though? If I can come back to that point. Alliance, bloc, cooperation, but nonetheless, six new members. Cyril Ramaphosa, who currently chairs the BRICS summit announced those six countries as follows. We have consensus on the first phase of this expansion process and other phases will follow. We have decided to invite the Argentine Republic, the Arab Republic of Egypt, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to become full members of BRICS. The membership will take effect from the 1st of January. Yeah, that's right. If anything, this is the one development I thought was quite eyebrow raising indeed in, in terms of two particular countries that were mentioned here. That was Saudi Arabia and of course the United Arab Emirates. These are massive oil producers indeed they probably make up the lion's share of oil production in the world if anything that potentially has implications for this ongoing uh, gathering gaggle of BRICS countries if it is able eventually to really formalize itself set up institutions and then grow from there then it becomes something which i think uh, effectively the us and the eurozone would worry about but here's the, the kicker in all of it at the end of the day just the United States and indeed the Eurozone alone makes up the overall customer base of all of these countries. They will not in real terms be tinkering with that arrangement any time soon because they're dependent on the US and the European market, including, of course, the very fact that some of these BRICS countries themselves have their own conflicts that will prevent any real meaningful uh, shift in alliance to a BRICS member country. For instance, China and India are at each other's throats in border disputes, including border disputes potentially between China and Russia. And also countries like China and India, which have a large industrial base, wouldn't really be interested in seeing Africa develop its own competing, cheaper, if you will, industrial base that might even siphon off their own economic advantage, which right now is sorely needed. In fact, the Chinese right now are dealing with a massive youth unemployment crisis, 20% in that part of the world. So there are many internal contradictions here, which really, if I'm to be brutally honest, if I were the US or the European zone, I'd be quite relaxed and pretty much say to their own citizens, relax. BRICS at the moment is pretty much a paper tiger.